today we play Best of One. The only one in Best of One. Not Virginia Taxes. Ta-da! You Orion. This is standard. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we're taking a look at Arakdos deck. Oh, but CGB, didn't you recently play Arakdos deck that had dinosaurs in it and sweepers, CGB? You said it was like a control deck, CGB. No questions, because what we're playing today is a very different take on Rakdos from Soko Sis. Soko's? Sokos13, uh, username on MTG Online. They played a qualifier. I am enjoying taking these lists from the MTGO best of three competitive qualifiers and testing their best of one medal and giving kind of a best of one review for them. This is something I always enjoy doing on the channel. I've never done this many of these in a row, but to be totally honest with you, I don't have a lot of Brewer's Spark right now for standard. I seen the cards a lot so having other people build the decks and then kind of tuning tweaking and trying them for best of one is actually bringing me a lot of joy and it keeps content coming for you so hopefully you are cool with that if you're not i'm cool are you cool i usually say you're cool anyway let's continue my brewers uh, for those just looking for any kind of status update on if i'm burnt out or what's going on with me I mean, I think you guys know these cards have been legal and standard for a long time and there are no new cards for standard really since Lost Caverns. So it's kind of a long dry spell of the same format. I think you guys under can understand that. I think that's reasonable. My Brewer's Spark has been occupied by Commander. Like it, I don't have the same vibe in Timeless. It's definitely a sweaty format. I think it's a great best of three format. I do enjoy watching it, playing it kind of not there for me all the time doesn't mean i won't play timeless at all sometimes i get nostalgic sometimes i want a yorian uh but yeah we're gonna we're gonna hold our we're gonna hold on on timeless i i think maybe when there's a competitive timeless event i might get that fire back not to play the event but to net deck <laughs> quite frankly i love seeing what the competitive players what the pros play in a format a new format like timeless like that that's kind of exciting, right? I'm still a big fan of competitive magic. I love to watch it. I still love magic content. A lot of these things haven't changed about me even as I've been a content creator. So the other format I played a lot last year is Historic Brawl. And some of you are like, where's the Historic Brawl videos? I don't have a lot of spark for Historic Brawl. I'm not sure what it is. Right now, I like go to pull up a commander and it just doesn't you know, there's no click for me. Just, it's not doing much for me. I think I do need new cards for Historic Brawl as well to get excited. I think that that's what we're waiting for on Arena for me to want to brew again. Because I just haven't had that desire in a minute. All of my brewing is going into Commander. And if you've watched the Worst Possible Commander show, I've been building a lot of decks for the show. And I've been really enjoying both playing and brewing commander casually and for content and uh brewing for it because there's always new cards they released all those new lord of the rings commanders i just got my evil dead secret layer in i've got to build a deck around that and there are some really powerful commanders it, that i want to build as well so that's what's going on with me as a deck builder i hope that update is okay in this intro you probably already skipped ahead if you hate it now we can talk about the deck a little bit i just thought I've been doing a lot of this, hey, here's this list from MTGO in a while. Maybe some of you guys are thinking that I just hate magic or something. I don't. That's just where I stand as a deck builder at this time. Okay, this deck, it's a bat deck. Let's get that out of the way right now. It is a bat deck, but this deck is very aggressive. Similar to the green black deck that was very aggressive lots of creatures this deck has 26 creatures the creatures are so good in standard right now and they produce so much value you can just totally slam tons of creatures in the deck the non-creature spells are three cruelty of gix which can get back carnosaurs and other awesome things uh brotherhood's end anoint with affliction cut down and go for the throat everything else creature value 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 so harvester making a reappearance bat in the deck four preachers love that two gixes i thought this deck would be bad with gix because you would just try to kind of curve bat into gix all the time but not really i found that gix is actually really good in the mid game and you'll see in the games that we play that sometimes you end up using cruelty of gix to tutor for gix 
ding flavor win and in in like the middle of the game like say turn seven or eight because you have two or three creatures sitting on the battlefield the opponent gives you an opening you just tutor up a gix you attack you draw three cards now you're way ahead you go from parody to way ahead i thought that was way better than expected of course sometimes you discover gix you cast your four copies of geological appraiser and you might discover gix same with a carnosaur there's four of those the discover keeps the pressure on the opponent and figuring out how to pressure the opponent with this deck is the most important thing that i found for making sure that you are successful there's one bone horde dracosaur it's like shielded number four I actually like that split. I think it's pretty smart. Just a reminder that we have a sideboard. If you hit craft all, you might craft some cards in a sideboard. Maybe someday you will use a sideboard. I don't know. I prefer it in best of one. What are our sus cards going into this? I'm always sus of the bat. I don't know if we have enough aggro in the deck to make the bat worth it, but we do have 26 creatures. It makes playing the bat seem a little more realistic to me. Geological appraiser. I am not sure. I am not sure that this is a good enough best of one card. It's kind of blood braid elfie, but when you're on the draw, if this is your turn for play and the opponent just untaps and turns a million awesome creatures sideways, you might just be dead. So I am sus of the appraiser. We, that's about it. I, the rest of these cards are pretty well proven. I'm excited to see what they can do in the game. So let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Yes, I know. I know I'm playing bats. I I want the bats to I want the, to believe in the bats. I I do think at least this deck will pressure the opponent a lot and try to make the bats good. Hmm. Hmm. Cut down. Go for the throw. Harvester. Gix. Preacher. I mean, it's a lot of castable spells and bad mana, but we have removal, so we'll keep it. What am I supposed to name with this? <laughs> Do I have to use it to cast my vampire? I guess I have a few vampires. <laughs> I'm not naming bat. That's for sure. Look at all these types. What the hell am I doing with a cavern? <laughs> I feel scammed. Scammed into running into a cut down. Oh, man. Oh, we're starting off hot. <laughs> our opponent manipulating their life total with underground rivers to keep our preacher from being good. Classic. But you can't counter this, can ya? It's a vampire. All right, they're on the draw with a schooner. That alone is pretty good for us, but they did have cut down. That is a very important card for breaking serve and making your schooner playable. But they have a tapped land on three. Oh, don't kill it. Come on. Hope you saved one. Should we play the Shieldred or should we try to bait with the Gix? And mana efficiency. I, I can't believe these caverns are so weird. Do you have another removal spell in your Demir deck? Hmm? 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 They passed the turn. <laughs> They'd kill this if they could have. Let's turn up the heat. Go ahead, make disappear. Let's go. Atawara! I mean, that is an expicy, that is an expicy, expensive way to put a Sheldred in the hand. Now here comes a Mastermind. That Mastermind's gonna have to die. We can let this resolve. Is that gonna be a make disappear? Wow. I mean, I guess with the cavern, that makes sense. Urtai on top and they keep it. All right, bonus draws give them draws, but draws cost them life. Interesting.
I think I just play it. They kill it. I get it back. Or we cruelty them now. They don't counter it. Take something out of their hand. They draw an extra card. I draw an extra card. That's a lot better with the Shieldred. It's a lot better with a Shieldred. Let them have it. You will suffer. Urtai now or Urtai later? Urtai now. I think I know what they're going to do. I'm going to draw an extra card here. Oh, I forgot about that. They're going to get another card with the Mastermind. Everybody gets cards. Ooh, they're slowing down. They're slowing down. They're blue black, right? If I just resolve this cruelty, they can't. Yeah, they, they can't do anything about it. We're also getting to the point where we could gix them. <laughs> um, hmm. I guess they really want to play this next turn. But Aklazots, they might not be able to play. They don't have the land. And even if they do, it's a very expensive card that might get killed. Tapped land. Good to see. The Mastermind wants some. Gotta get some damage. Go for the throat. And we go tutoring. What is the tutor? Right now, the dino is not uncounterable. It's Phyrexians and vampires that are uncounterable. Oh, God. <laughs> not the bat. <laughs> so our opponent has a make disappear and a cut down in hand. These are things we must keep in mind. This might literally be cruelty into cruelty. But honestly, I think if we hit them with removal spells, we'll be fine. And I think that it's this one because this can get the boat. Start with killing the mastermind. Followed by killing the Uratai. If they've got no board, they've got no chance. And we do not anoint here because they could make disappear that. Mm-hmm. Good card. It ramps them and it gives them a card, which is very nice for them. But it puts us in the driver's seat, which we need to be to make this thing happen. Praise! Look at the value! Oh yeah, baby. If they have a Gix's command, it doesn't cover enough. Everything has three power. They're gonna need some bizarre sweeper to get out of this. Preacher. Son of a bat! Batter up. All right, they need to cut down the harvester before I use it. If I use it, oh, that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. We'll see. Did I mention I think it's a mistake? Very articulate today. Give me a break. Maybe they're holding it for the vents. 
put in hand. <laughs> Yep, gotta do it. Still leaves your life total quite low. I think it's worth it, and they know I have another Gix, so they'll probably block something else, but... Mm, we'll see. Nice. Triggers. Mm. Cruelty. <laughs> Opponent has generated a map token. Card X. Exile top X. You may play lands cast spells without paying their mana cost. Hmm. <laughs> See if they leave me something nice on top. So they're not dead? Are you really not dead? What you got? What you got? Uh-huh. There it is. I don't... Is it... I don't even want to pay for it. <laughs> They're at two. I've got this, right? So, decline. Double check. Chapter three. Bring forth the Praetor. Your turn. A victory in a good old fashioned mid range street fight. Hmm. It might be too slow. You just need to draw an untapped land or a cut down. It's a good chunk of cards in the deck or have the opponent play a slower deck. That would be fine too. It begins. <laughs> this is, so Harvester has had a weird time in the meta where it like fell completely out of favor because it just didn't kill anything or do enough. And the color black red got worse without invoke despair. And then now it's like Harvester has to come back because of the stupid bat. <laughs> uh, I love to hate it. I adore, I adore something to just give my ire to on the arena. People who are like, CGB, I hate him. He complains all the time. What a complainer. It gives me something to talk about. My God, the world would be so boring. I think they'll just kill this. I think we wait. Call me crazy. They're like holding up mana, make them play a Shieldred, kill the Shieldred, then play the Harvester, so they have to choose whether or not to use their mana or deploy something good. Yeah, we wait. We chill. Okay. That's a tricky one. Those who get in That's a really tricky one. On the bright side, our opponent has to discard two. Drop it. Do I punch Liliana? Let's get a board presence. Let's get two board presences. Or not. Put in hand. Something to discard. <laughs> we all have things we uh, they've dropped two they've dropped a cut down, so they might have trouble with the bat. They're definitely going to play removal on this. But they would love for me to power up the vents and remove that, probably. I think they're trying to alt Lily. Down to one card in hand. I know about the bat. 
They have a field of ruin for the, if we were to power something up. Interesting. They let me do that. Still reaching there, huh? I'm tired You're gonna let Lily get attacked? You really are. Opponent's very odd with Liliana. So, if we power up the vents and attack with it, they're just gonna field it. So that's not the play. Could get an appraiser or we could tutor. The opponent's gonna keep hitting our hand. We probably need to just play another appraiser. Keep it coming. Too much value for one Liliana. But we have to remember, unless it's like an amazing hit, we want to put it in the hand. Because we're probably going to discard it. Mm-hmm. Hand! <laughs> Finally, a piece of trash card I can just chuck in the bin to Liliana without feeling bad. <laughs> they are... They've got to be just debating on cracking this field. You don't want to crack the field, though. You want to wait until I actually use one of the vents to attack. Otherwise, there's nothing stopping me from doing it. All right, you do you. the top yeah lily your goose is cooked she tried so hard and got so far i think what i want to do is search for the dinosaur when i can play it i don't think they're going to blow up an enchantment but they might draw another liliana or get back a liliana and make me discard a card from my hand so i think we go chapter one nothing take her out for a nice dinner of course sorry i'm not interested in dying today tortoise off the top Look at the mills! Why Why am I... I'm too giddy about this. Oh my goodness, that's... Go for the freaking throat. And there's a Shildred in the grave now? Do I care about this tortoise that much? Not that much. I think it's you. Reload! Feel the power of card draw. Man, when did Gix get so good? I guess when so many things in your deck are like two or three cards, it's not bad. I have a Shildred now. Are you guys gonna... You want me to get the bat. I can feel it. I feel you want me to get this bat. I feel like they have a removal spell and you want me to grab this bat. And you know what? No. No. That's that's terrible. We just double down on Shildreds. Why play our Shildred when we can play theirs? That's what we do. Easy. See. 
They're at three. They're at three health. <clears throat> Mental and emotional lethal is still lethal, so I did not miss lethal this turn. I don't care what anybody says. Today's Cool Kids Club YouTube member shout out goes to Stefano Sensi. Stefano, thank you very much for joining the Cool Kids Club. We're doing a thing right now where Cool Kids Club members get early access. So hit the join button below right here on YouTube to get an early access to my videos. Stefano, you're cool. Boom, bang, pow. Is that not the best just like review of a hand you ever heard? I am debating naming vampire to avoid taking one damage because we're against mono red. Is that the right play? I probably just end up taking it later because of the appraiser. I can't believe it. Gotta be ready. Every point counts, baby. Every point counts. Here go! We chill, we chill. Don't, don't panic guys. Don't panic. Everything is according to plan. Zap. Get that out of here. See? Avoided the one damage like a pro. Oh no. Is it, is it the right play? Maybe the opponent, maybe they'll hold on to something if they see the Brotherhood's end in hand. I think if I play it there and kill my own appraiser and the two chicks, I think they just redeploy something better like Squee. We'll see if that ends up being a disaster, but I mean, you don't want to cast this and have an empty board and throw it over to the haystack. You want to get back the Carnosaur, then cast this. Mono red. What you doing? No, they they know about discover. It tallies favor. Free Felden. Shenanigans. This is five. Feels bad. These cards. Um, okay, they got rage up their sleeve. That's good damage in the air. Maybe we're supposed to disrupt it. Instead of get back the Carnosaur. It's too risky. It's too risky, guys. We make them play a haste creature and use the rage. Of course, the favor does hit, but we'll have a go for the throat that they don't know about. Wait a minute. Oh, and ETBs. No, we're fine. <laughs> I thought it was when it died. What's the one that when it dies you discover? I don't play enough limited. Yeah, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the greatest mono red player in the history of mono red players who has put together a combination like nothing you've ever seen before. It's monstrous rage and Godric the cloaked dead and dead. Hallelujah. Holy crap. Dino. Hey, free cut down. We'll take him. <laughs> Show me another cool move, Mono Red. 
Would you like to double lightning strike this Carnosaur? One time? Ah, he loves it when he calls me Big Papapa. Throw your hands in the air if you use a true player. We definitely getting money playing mono red like dummies. I'll stop. I'll st I should stop. I I can't promise I'll stop. <laughs> they found a charming scoundrel. They have attached a wicked roll to the scoundrel. Yeah? Really? Bring it. Show me what you can do. Um, opponent, you can only have one roll at a time. Okay. You did it. They threw their whole hand at it and a dinosaur died. We deploy the bat. I'm... Batman. <laughs> What's up, bird? No attacks. Cringe. Hello, where's my shield rid? Yes. I mean, I don't know why anyone would be excited about that. <laughs> the duality of the love for the bat. <laughs> they, they're moving in herds. <laughs> They do move in herds. Nice. That's enough. Might as well be sure. There's a lot of ways to lose life in this deck. A lot of ways for the opponent to take it. And yet, we prevail. DGB, why are you the greatest ever? <sighs> no questions. That's a keep. We're back gaming. We're back gamers now on the play. We might even get to preach. I haven't used the preacher much in these games so far. Shows up at the wrong time. He got countered once. It's a lot of land. Ugh, ah! Okay, they have no white mana. They're reliant on the Celestis. We could take the Celestis. Well, right now they have nothing to do next turn. I'm taking it. I'm going to make them draw the white mana. I don't think they can. I don't think they have what it takes to draw white mana. Let's go. That, mm. well, the good news about that, the bad news is it puts them on a path towards to populate. The good news about it, they're probably not going to play Jace this turn. I was a little nervous about like them dropping Jace on three, drawing cards from there. Just a little. I mean, it's okay for to be able to attack down a Jace, of course. But now they still have to rip the right card for the depopulate. Make them have it. Mmm. Mmm, another bat. <laughs> uh. Opponent, I see a good play for you. Just play the Jason Mill me. <laughs> Just go for it. See what happens to you. Main phase mend. Fill that graveyard. You know, I'm used to the black decks being able to hit that graveyard. I really am. Now I'm not so sure that they do. But we could reanimate this. <laughs> and if they don't depopulate, they get freaking milled. 
The other option is to bat the depopulate. I think the first thing we should do though is attack and see what we draw. I'm helping mill myself. Double bat? They're not sweeping me now. So tempting to take that mauler though. If they mill me down to 20, are they going to die the next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two. They do not die the next turn. So they could go mill me, mill me. And then I'm almost dead. It's actually really close. Let's deploy. Farewell, depopulate, sunset revelry, which they're going to have to cast next turn, but we can remove the creatures. So this is take the depopulate. Hold up removal. Or do we play the harvester? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. They're going to gain, though. They're going to gain from the revelry. All right. Don't play the other bat here. Wait until next turn if they hit the white source. Man, I really want to get to enough mana to gix them and then hit the right cards and mill them. That would be so nice. Oh, that would be a beautiful world. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, right? Now they have to top deck the double white. If they attack and mill me, they're done. Because I can counterattack them for lethal. That's why we had to play the harvester, not the other bat. Woo! They're saying if I don't find white, it's not going to happen anyway. So I'm going to try to hit the untapped white source to cast this revelry to buy another turn. They discard adjacent a memory deluge. They have the white source. They have the revelry. They have the full mode revelry. All right, we have to bat the farewell. Hope they didn't have another sweeper. And then Shieldred or Anoint. If we anoint, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're down to eight. Two mana open. 40 cards in the deck. We have to be a little careful with drawing from Gix and putting ourselves in a bad spot. There's nothing I can draw that exiles a mauler before it hits me. Right. Forty cards. We gotta get there. That's too hasty damage. That could matter. I think I've got time for this. Okay. No! They've got it. They're gonna sweep. I can't avoid the sweep. God damn it. I guess make them give me a depopulate, but that's cheaper. Make them cast the farewell. That's all their mana? They literally drew into the double. Yeah, make them cast the farewell. It populate gives me a card, but that's part of their strategy is to mill me out. Make them tap out. We play the Shieldred. They take at least two. We channel this after the next board wipe. They take two more. Then hopefully we find, we get back a Shieldred because we don't want the Shieldred farewelled, right? We want it depopulated, which they'll have. Okay, 
Yes, it's 100%. Make them use the farewell next turn. 100%. We want the, we want the Shieldred alive so that we can reanimate it because those get in damage. These are slow, but might still be useful. Carnosaur, I just don't know. I mean, it could hit another Shieldred, but I just don't know. I think these are too slow. The cut down could still be important. The land could still be important. I mean, it's straight up, right? You use the farewell, but they probably won't name graveyards. Yeah, they don't. Okay. So, blood token now or never. We're at 35 cards. I don't think the opponent is going to double jace me anytime soon. Yeah, it's going to get rid of the cut down now. Okay, they get that back. We play land, shield through the apocalypse, channel. There's two points. Untap, draw. Two more. They depopulate and then probably mend. Okay, they're casting Celestis. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Gix. Make them do it again, they're gonna lose two more. We're gonna need one more Shieldred. They do have Mending, so they can gain life, but they have to play it around the Shieldred. There it is, there's one! Okay. Okay, now please maul me. Come on, mauler. Do the mauler. Do the mauler. Man, how do I get him to not do that in response? How do I get him to mess up? How do I get him to do something different? I don't. That's obviously why they have this open. Maybe they'll just... Oopsie. Yeah. They still have to find another way to kill this. 30 cards. We're in double Jace range if they find it. We already saw one hit the graveyard, so they're going to have to draw into it. They discard second Mauler. Super close. Can you get out of it? Did you sweep the board again? Maybe they have the Jace this time. 15. I think they've got it. I think they've got it. Ugh. Exactly enough. If I had drawn one less card with Gix. Me the truth. If they had just not drawn the white source a turn sooner, if they hadn't had double sweepers, so many woulda couldas. Oh, that stings. Here I go naming vampire with cavern again. I've done that so many times. All right, ramp. Can we beat ramp? Uh, vampire. There we go. We got a lot of value. We got some disruption. Is that enough? We can also cruelty their Atroxa. That's fun. Do we go for the Gix here? I think we go for Preacher. I think our opponent's gonna have like a removal, maybe. 
and the setup's nice. Let's see if they already have a depopulate. We get to draw a card. They invaded Zendikar. Right now, there's no way to kill an Atroxa, and that scares me. There's a way to kill an Atroxa! I'm not afraid anymore! Did you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore! I have to discard the hand size if I take this, right? Nope. I've got the land drop. Ooh, and it was a good one. <laughs> dun dun. At least we drew cards before that happened. Everything's fine. This is fine. Do we cruelty them? They probably have ways to remove it. Don't want this to transform. So I think we play Preacher. It shuts off their incubator token. And if they remove the Preacher, we anoint the token. This is like the safe play. Well, that's just mean. Well, at least they're greedy. Bye bye. So we have stick. That's got to be a ley line binding, which they always, always have. Another appraiser. I mean, do we want to fight over this transforming is a real question. I can't believe I'm about to say this. I need to draw a bat. <laughs> Oh, no. No, I didn't just say that. All right. I think we let them unlock this invasion if that's their big play. Let's do the appraising. Play something they don't want to bind. Easy. Never didn't have it. Okay. Take the Atroxa, they bind the bat. Take the binding, they depopulate. I guess I'd rather they depopulate. Or they cast the Atroxa. We go for its throat, maybe cruelty it soon. I mean, they do have an angel on the board. Sure. Okay, maybe they're not going to depopulate. Yeah, they're transforming. Okay. Kind of going to be weird if you're just holding a depopulate and you can't do anything. Lovely. Oopsie. <laughs> You're gonna depopulate now? <laughs> they really are trying to transform it all. So, if they play a binding and take my cruelty, how upset are we? Not that upset. I think we just take four though, then we take another three, then next turn we can go like removal, removal, or we just get the Atraxa. Cut down doesn't remove anything here, we use the anoint. I mean, if we give them a binding and they take this, how upset are we? Not very. Yeah. 
Okay, take four, gain one. They take this, untap, throat, throat. That's, yeah, yeah, it's sus. It's too sus. All right, let this be. Let him transform all of their stuff. We get a preacher. This blanks their board. Actually, so Sheldred really blanks their board, right? And gains life. If they top deck removal for Sheldred, we die, I think. Is it a land? So we can play Appraiser and hold up a go for the throat? Wow, this is really hard. This is really hard. It might be a land. I think it is. I think it is. I think it's a land. Three life for a land. The things we do for love. That is a bad hit. This is what that is. Good top deck. Good, good top deck. If they drew an angel, they win. Okay. What is it? Not an angel. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, baby. Come to daddy. You, all the way, you, you attack for one. No bindings, opponent. None of that stuff. None of that stuff. Hold. I mean, if we pass here, we're good. So this was kind of a crazy attack. What are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Why you do this? Okay, there's their depopulate. And I get a card. Up to eight. Yes! Suck it, Leyline Binding. That is amazing. I will never question this card for the rest of my days. This card is cracked. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> That's not good. That's not great. How do we play around the binding? It's 25 to freaking 8. They're drawing cards from this beanstalk. How do we get this binding where we need it to be? I very much want their Atraxa. I also very much want my shieldred. I don't want to pay life, but if I get their Atraxa, they're just going to bind it. If I get my shieldred, they're just going to bind it. So it's a bad use of my turn. I need to use my turn wisely. If I just play the Dracosaur, they just bind it. I guess it's the Preacher. Yep. Okay. I mean, they went right for it. 
and I just need them to draw three or four lands in a row. Oopsie, they failed to do that. My face. So how many angels is that? I, three? Oh, just two? Oh no. What the? Those were both off the top. Our opponent is a stone cold killer. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, all oh, the ice in the veins. Empty handed two in a row. Oh, oh man. Oh, my butt hurts. Ah. And we are back for the post game wraps and I went three and two running this build of Rakdos. While the other build of Rakdos I featured a few days ago with the burn down the houses and the Chandras is definitely more of my traditional play style. I really respect the fact that there are so many just good creatures in standard that playing a ton of them makes more sense. And it makes sense, especially with deep cavern bat. When you have creatures to close out the game, the disruption from the bat is far more powerful. So I think that this is a very good bat deck as opposed to a very bad bat deck, many of which I see regularly on the ladder, which are either two on the slow side of mid range or straight up control decks running the bat. I do think that this is the way you do it with a lot of creatures to really close the game. Cruelty of Gix has a ton of flexibility in this particular deck. I would like to see, I can't believe I'm saying this, maybe it needs like one copy of pilfer or like, cause sometimes getting a bat isn't the best thing to do against an opponent. Or maybe you are just supposed to tutor for the darn bat. Maybe we don't need like a pilfer to take something permanently out of their hand. Man, I hate getting more bats. <laughs> okay, I take it back. It doesn't need a discard effect. We have the bat. I just feel weird searching up the bat. Uh, but you know, bat hater here, you know it. But this is a better version. What would I cut for best of one actually? I don't know if we need to. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think that this list is very solid. The three two record was about where I expected it to be. The one thing we could do is lower the curve a little so that our cards are more playable on curve. Maybe we don't need the Dracosaur and the Carnosaur. Maybe we need two more go for the throats when we're on the draw, something like that. You don't wanna run too many sweepers because sweeping your own bats is sad, but I like having one. Just being able to cruelty tutor up a Brotherhood's End seems great. And Brotherhood's End is excellent if you have, say, a Preacher of the Schism out or a Shieldred. It doesn't kill those. So there's a lot of things to love about the deck here. And I think it's a good best of one choice. Would I craft it if I weren't making content? I'd probably craft a slower version. It's a few too many creatures for me. And it's a bat deck, so it's not my style. Can this deck get you to Mythic? I think this deck can definitely get you to Mythic. I think that this is an interesting choice that can compete in a meta full of little white aggro decks and red aggro decks and blue white control decks. It actually threads the needle better than the average mid range list because of the amount of pressure it puts on the board because of all the value and all the creatures. So yeah, I think that you can get Mythic with this deck. It gets a stamp of approval from CGB. Thank you for watching this video. You stayed till the end. That is the coolest thing you can do for me. Now you can hit like, you can hit subscribe. You can consider joining the Cool Kids Club. If you become a member, you get access to this video 24 hours earlier than the competition. Then everyone else, you will be the first on the front lines of knowing the decks that I played on the day. So if that's exciting to you, hit join. Become a Cool Kids Club member. It's only $4.99 a month. It's good value. Other things, you can check out my sponsors. You can go to coolstuffinc.com and use the promo code CGB on a purchase. That is the reason, so many of you doing that, that they have been the longest running sponsor of my channel by far, and I love them for that, and I love you for that. Ultimate Guard, this is their first year as a full-fledged sponsor of the channel. Please go check out their products with the link in the description, and please consider Ultimate Guard. They are what I use the protection, the one protection for the one and best of one. I'm going to coin that somehow. It's going to be a great ad. Just you wait. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.
WolfDuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of Covert Go Blue, and you can find all of his unique tokens and playmats at Covert Go Blue HQ. Take to the skies with CGB's Shark token and playmat, and his premium Dragon Rider token and playmat, or become the apex predator of your next game night with his Dinosaur Rider playmat and token. CoolStuffInc.com slash CGB is your place for all things Covert Go Blue. So check it out if you want to channel your inner one in best of one. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock.